There are many obstacles standing between progressives and getting elected to Congress, but not all of them are exactly what they might at first seem to be. We're gonna give you an example, and it's called the moderate pack. It's a pack, they raise money. And in this case, the way that it's being presented is this. Axios reported last week that the PAC, the moderate PAC, is planning to raise $20 million to fight off Democratic primary challengers in 2024 and, quote, scare off progressive groups like Justice Democrats that have backed several successful primary challengers and helped create a growing squad of progressive lawmakers in Congress. So look, already at face value, that's not great. It's a group designed to stop the Democratic Party from ever becoming nearly as progressive as its voters are, so that's bad. But it's actually way worse than that. And when Axios did this reporting, they would just leave you with the idea that this is like another, I don't know, blue dog or centrist Democratic group or something like that. But it's actually worse. The group's only consultant is Greg Schultz, Joe Biden's former campaign manager. So, you know, having someone so closely tied to the current president who seems to have as his only goal in life stopping progressives from getting elected, that would be bad. But there's some other things that you need to understand as well. And in this case, we have to give a lot of credit to Kayla Lacey at The Intercept who dug into this group. Not only who founded it, who works in it, but also, and most importantly, who's actually funding this effort to control what sort of Democrats make it through the primary process. So first, the founder and workers. We have Ty Strong, the moderate PAC president and founder, worked for a decade as a financial and business management analyst at Booz Allen Hamilton before joining a smaller financial firm in Pennsylvania back in 2020 that closed abruptly the following year. He joined the moderate PAC in October of 2021. Mary Sue Strong is the chief financial officer at ProSync Technology Group, a defense contractor that provides IT services to the federal government. So already you're off to a great start. You've got some financial people tied in with Wall Street. You have defense contractors, you've got some Joe Biden former people. And here is how they would word their mission for this group. Ty Strong wrote this Wall Street Journal op-ed and said, He criticized what he called a democratic circular firing squad and progressive purity tests that have threatened the political careers of centrist Democrats like Mark Kelly and Kirsten Sinema in Arizona. If Democrats in purple states can't find a way to pivot back to the center and avoid death by circular progressive firing squad, Strong wrote, get ready for Republican control of both houses of Congress in 2023. He is not interested in a circular firing squad. He is interested in turning those guns outward towards any outsiders who might wanna run for office. In any event, he also said that moderate House Democrats often face primary challenges from the far left while also facing competitive general elections. We've seen the Republican Party cannibalize its moderate faction. Replicating this on the Democratic side would be a big mistake. So here's the thing, all of that is largely what you might expect. It is a group masquerading as very moderate, when really it's there to advance the interests of defense contractors, Wall Street, and all of that. But can you think of a way that it could get any worse? What if all of its funding didn't even come from bad Democrats, but came from Republicans, and in this case, it is true. Since last year, the moderate PAC has raised just over $1 million, all of it from a single donor, billionaire and co-founder of a Philly investment firm, Jeff Yass. I say no in this case, but um, yes, vice chair at the Cato Institute, Yass has come under fire for using creative money moving structures to avoid some $1 billion in taxes. That's not enough for him, he needs the law to be even more in his favor. Most recently, he's registered as a libertarian, occasionally gives to centrist, centrist, local and national Democrats, but the overwhelming balance of his political contributions go to GOP candidates. And so we can get more into how exactly he's avoid paying taxes and how far he's willing to contort the Democratic Party to make sure that his taxes never go up. But that's who he is, that's who this group is. They know where their funding is coming from. They know that it's Republicans trying to choose what Democrats they'll face in the general election. And all of these people, whether it's Greg Schultz or Ty Strong or Barry Sue Strong, apparently perfectly happy with giving that level of control over to libertarian Republicans. Jake, what do you think? Well, okay, first I wanna look at the silver lining, okay? So uh, when we founded Just Democrats on this show, uh, six years ago, everyone in mainstream media and everyone in the uh, moderate Democrats or Republicans, or you name it, was like, oh, just as Democrats, what I said, there's no way that's gonna work, right? Now, they're organizing whole packs funded by Republicans, getting millions of dollars in an effort to make sure we gotta stop the momentum of Justice Democrats. 
Well, that's a hell of a thing, isn't it, guys? Yeah. I mean, you saw it launch on this show. I remember the goofy segment I did. I was like, well, it's not just that we're seeking economic justice, social justice, but it's also since they're not taking corporate PAC money for just us and hence Justice Democrats. You saw all that with your own eyes coming out of my uh, mouth in the corny way that I do it, right? <laughs> you saw Ro Khanna come on here and said, I'm gonna be the first just Democrat. Now look at how scared they are of them. Mm -hmm. See, they tell you that you can't get anything done because that's a way of depressing you and making sure that you don't fight back. Look at this, when you do fight back, they get scared and they organize their actual friends, which are Republicans to come fight you. Now to the idea of the circular firing squad. Now well, that's interesting because moderate Democrats also finance huge campaigns against progressive incumbents. AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Cori Bush, etc. So what happened to the circular firing squad? It's the same guys, not these exact guys, but the same group of moderate, so-called moderate corporate Democrats. And sometimes literally the same exact owners. And that's because they don't believe in, oh, we have to make sure all of our incumbents are protected. Oh, We don't care where they are on the political spectrum. We just don't want a firing squad where we're firing at each other. But instead of the terrible, dastardly Republicans, oh yeah, I'm taking money from Republicans <laughs> and they're using it in attack against progressives in the party, mm -hmm. okay? They're literally creating the circular firing squad and it is literally Republicans financing firing at other Democrats. It's weird the Axios didn't go into all of that. Now that brings me to my favorite point, of course, John. So look, that's why you need independent media like The Intercept, okay? Mm -hmm. And so great job in breaking out the actual facts. So who is this Yas Queen? Okay, well, he's given $47 million to Republicans before. It's not like he's a little Republican. So why does he care about supporting uh, the Democratic Party? Wink. It's because he's buying corrupt Democrats. And there's a giant silver lining there. Hold on, I'm gonna get to the second silver lining in this story. But he's supporting a, a moderate Democrats because they actually agree 100% with Republicans on the number one issue that he cares most about, which is tax cuts for the rich. So John's gonna get into his tax yeah. uh, uh, schemes in a second. But look at how brazen this is. But yet, Axios, which broke the story originally before The Intercept, didn't mention that he's a Republican, has financed Republicans. By the way, also Joe Biden. Oh, Bernie Sanders, I'm your friend, don't worry, I'm such a good friend. I'm gonna do all your policies, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Oh, $15 minimum wage, Bernie, come to this party. It's a wedding, it's a little red, but don't worry about it, come on, come on. <laughs> come and What's see, come and see, What's right? Song yeah, and so, and then meanwhile, the minute he gets into office, he's like, I'm not gonna do it. He, he brags about it in a Super Bowl interview, like seconds after he got into office. He's like, I'm not doing $15 minimum wage. And he screwed Bernie and progressives on everything. Now one of his top allies is heading the group to make sure none of Bernie's allies win. Yeah. Okay, so this is what corruption looks like. And that, But the extra twist, guys, is that the next time we have a contested primary, for example, Nina Turner versus Chantel Brown, everyone in mainstream media will pretend that the progressive is more against the Democratic Party, which makes it sound like they're more Republican. But everyone in media knows it's the Republicans that are financing calling progressives Republicans. Yep. And the media 100% goes along with it because they're actually not at the fringes of corruption, the media is at the epicenter of corruption. All right, I got uh, more, but go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, well, and I don't want to get into his taxes. I do have to uh, fact check you because uh, as as ever, you're spreading fake news. You said that he had spent $47 million in donations. No, he spent $47 million just last year alone in just uh, federal elections. That's a tiny bit of all of the money that he's given Good over the course check. of many years in state elections. After all, um, he backed uh, Republican candidates in Pennsylvania at all different levels uh, last year. So uh, there's a lot of money to spread around. Not enough for him to just mind his own business and go away and never bother us again. There's no amount of money that will ever um, cause him to do that. He, like most of the rich in America, has dragon sickness and he's ruining our country in his pursuit of pointless wealth. In any event, over six years, 
He saved $1 billion in taxes, paying an average federal income tax rate of just 19%, lower even than other Wall Street traders, let alone other rich people. That's not a 19% tax rate, that's a 19% income tax rate. And I guess I'm a dummy, I'm not rich. I don't even know how that's legal, <laughs> specifically to pay that low in income. Like he's paying a lower rate. Then you are, dear viewer. Does that seem appropriate for a guy with billions of dollars? I don't think so. He has a group, um, by the way, called the Commonwealth Foundation. It advocates to take the state's public policy, this is uh, for uh, Pennsylvania, back to its roots. And the group is drawing criticism for pushing policies that Yass's critics say help him continue to accumulate wealth while avoiding taxes like cutting funding for schools and public services. So, yeah, I mean, look, that puts him in good company with most of the rich in America. This is a guy who has so much money that he can save a billion in taxes alone and believes that in the pursuit of yet more billions that he will never spend, never see. It's pointless wealth, it doesn't mean anything. Your education, your kids' education should be shoddy, subpar. Services that would affect you and your family and your friends should be cut so that somewhere in an online bank account, He'll have an extra zero at the end of an account that he will never tap out. Okay, so John, now I'm gonna do a fact check on you. Damn. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, you can play this game. <laughs> no, listen, it, it's not a matter of conjecture as to whether uh, he has gone too far in trying to avoid taxes. He's been audited and lost, so that's a matter of fact. Uh, so this guy does this on a serial basis. That's how he managed to avoid about a billion dollars in six years in taxes. Uh, that's a billion dollars that could have gone to your kid's education so they could have an opportunity to be as rich as him. But he doesn't want him to have that opportunity. Look, that's a twofer for them. They save money in their infinite greed because the extra billion would do what for you? Yes, queen, what can you buy with the extra billion that you couldn't buy now? Nothing, nothing, nothing. at all. Like You're just doing it for because you're insatiably greedy. It's actually quite sick. But the second win for him is, oh, good. No, no, no other kids can compete with my kids. No other, uh, no one else can cross the moat. They love destroying opportunity for others like that. That's why his second cause is make sure we destroy the public schools. Yeah, it's really, it's unbelievably disgusting. So, what do corporate Democrats do? Go, yes, Queen. <laughs> you want to destroy opportunity for others and give the rich even more tax cuts? What do you think moderate Democrats were created for? So they love it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, guys, I'm not. There's there. There are now leftists who think eat the rich and I, and all the rich are bad and there should be no billionaires, etc. And then there's different groups within that. Okay, because <laughs> John just like okay. So I hear you, John, but you're wrong. Uh, I don't look. I in the telling of the story, they explain it in a different article uh, that Yas first got rich off of this thing where he figured out the stats on a racetrack and wh which horses are more likely to win, etc. And then he, and he won like one hundred sixty thousand dollars along with a couple of other guys, and then they won like seven hundred fifty thousand. And they're like, "Can you believe this?" And I was like, "Wow, that sounds really good." <laughs> like figuring out a way to win those bets and take it to the racetrack. He got back. I don't mind him making the money on that. That's great. Okay. Later, he went on to do finance in ways that, you know, look, some might say it's great, some might say it's terrible, etc. That's open for debate. That's not the issue, guys. The issue is that he then takes his money and buys politicians. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court has legally it has allowed for legalized bribery. And we've talked about this many times. Wolf-pack.com to get rid of it. But so he says, oh, okay, this is not enough. Me making money. Let's say he made money in the most pure way imaginable. And not really true if you read the details, but let's say it, right? Okay, that's then why do you need to go and bribe politicians and say, I want more tax cuts, I want more tax cuts, right? And the goddamn public schools. Like he didn't say and the public schools, but he's but he's advocating for policies that we believe lead in that direction. Why do you need to do that? Because you can't help yourself, yeah. okay? It's just like the uh, the dwarves in in uh, Lord of the Rings, right? Just dig and dig and dig until you get the Balrog out, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that's what these guys are. Okay, now I promised you a second silver lining. What's the other silver lining? Well, now you know definitively who is not corrupt, because the entire point of this pack is to fight against people who are not corrupt. Yaz doesn't want him in the Democratic Party. He doesn't want him in Congress at all. He's saying, no, eliminate everyone who won't give me tax cuts. Mm -hmm. 
So, and who are the people that he's targeting? Justice Democrats, because they're the only ones in Congress not corrupt. They don't take corporate PAC money, so they're not wed to to people like Yaz. And he hates that idea. Yeah. He's like, let's eliminate them so that 100% of Congress is corrupt. So uh, that is a significant silver lining. Now you know who the good guys are. By the way, these are all facts. You can look up all these facts. In fact, I want you to look up all these facts. And then you're not gonna find them in like rando, like we're not right wingers. Oh, Rando Joe said on Facebook. Mm -hmm. No, these are verifiable facts. EagleRifle.net is where <laughs> I get all my news. No, so actually. read the intercept story, read all the stories about it, read about it. Follow yes, Kayla Lacey. She's yeah, been on the network, she's been on the damage. Yeah, it's report. terrific, right? And and everyone in mainstream media can confirm every single one of these facts. Yet you will never see a mainstream media article that says next time that it's actually the Republic, Democrats have gotten in bed with Republican donors to destroy the only non-corrupt Democrats in the country. Yeah, And that's exactly what's happening. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So, all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.